All right. Well, hello. My name is Casey Long, and in today's session, we will be reviewing two tools that I like to use to create quick bibliographies. So please remember that no tool is ever error free. So it's always important to check your citations against a good guide or a citation um, book. We have a couple of them at the reference desk, and we also have some in our reference collection for you to check out. So um, the tool that I wanted to start with is called Zotero Bib, and it's a dumbed down version of my favorite tool, which I'm about to show you at the very end of this presentation. But some of the cool features in here is that it's free um, and you don't require any account. When you go to the real Zotero, the one that's super powerful, it's still free, but it does require that you create an account and it also requires that you download two items. This one requires no downloads. It covers bibliography styles in over 9,000 different styles. So if you're a science student and um, you need to publish in a particular science journal, then it's gonna give you that style. If you're just working with MLA, uh, Chicago or APA, it's definitely gonna be helpful with that. So it's helpful with um, doing parenthetical citations, for doing footnotes and endnotes. Um, and what I like the most is that you can look up the item. So you can use a URL, a title, ISBN number, DOI number, and just put it into their search box and it will locate it. So I, the other cool thing is that um, if you do any searches if, and you don't clear your browser cache, like if I close down, um, like I, I leave my computer, come back an hour later, it's still gonna be in there. So um, even if I close the window because it's just archived in that browser cache. Um, and you can also share your bibliography with others. So those are some of the cool things that I like about Zotero Bib. Uh, let's take a look at it real quick. So I'm going to, um, if you went to Zotero Bib on the internet, um, you'd see a screen that looks like this. And this is a book that I found in our catalog. All books have what we call an international standard book number. Um, and so that's a unique identifier. So if you had just this ISBN number, which will be unique to each book, then you can go ahead and throw it into the Zotero bib, click site, and it's gonna create the style for you. So I'm doing mine in MLA. And we can also do that by searching by the title. So here's a different book looking at decoding your cat. Um, just typed in some keywords and it located it in its uh, search engine. So now I've been able to add it and notice that it's just building a little bibliography here at the end. It's putting it in order by the, um, the correct order for the bibliography itself. So we're slowly building up a list of bibliography using Zotero Bib. This time I chose to use the DOI number. That's a digital object identifier that, especially if you're in the sciences, uh, usually almost every single article has that. Not all articles do in other disciplines, but if um, you're searching PubMed, then that might be an easy identifier. Maybe the title is just too much. So you just would copy and paste that into your citation. And then you are building out this bibliography. So there's a couple more things. As I mentioned before, you can search by PMID. What that is, is a PubMed identification number. Again, for our science students, who uh, might be searching PubMed. This is like one of the core databases that you need to be able to learn for anything in the behavioral sciences. It's um, the most important tool. It's also free. So it doesn't have free content. Some of the articles are free, but it's definitely one of the most important research tools for science students. And so here you can see they have the DOI number, but also a PMID number. So that makes it easy to grab the citation information and add it into that bibliography. And I believe we have um, two more ways that I would recommend. So if you are searching and um, you have the URL at the top of the screen, this won't work in all cases, especially if there's a firewall, um, like you had to log in, but often you can just grab that URL. This is one from our library databases. And so it definitely was behind a firewall and I was able to quickly grab that information as well. So as you're searching, if you go ahead and just have Zotero Bib open, then you'll be able to start creating a bibliography um, with all the items that you were finding. And since they have the DOI number, um, you should be able to get back to 
uh, those articles in some other format. So it's kind of better than just having a bunch of tabs open that you're creating this nice list for yourself. So the final way that you can do it is you can choose the type of item. So here you have a journal article. If you were looking at a video, it would also have that for a video. It gives you the fields that you need to fill out. So this is very much like when you're in citation machine and you just have to fill in the pieces. So it gives you all the fields that you might need to put in and then it creates the citation for you. So those are just a few of the ways that Zotero Bib works. So quick, easy, uh, cost nothing. Um, I believe that you can set up your own account. So that would be nice for being able to save these. And then you can share the bibliography with a friend. So that's the nice thing about that. The one that I love the most is called Zotero.org. Um, this was created by the same people, um, but it was really designed for researchers and it does not only grab your information and make it easy to cite, but it grabs your information, it pulls down that PDF if it can find it and holds it into your computer. So it starts saving things for you into one location that lives both on your computer and in the cloud. So um, every time you pull something down into the software, um, it syncs with the cloud. And so it lives in both of those places. And what's also cool about it is it lets you um, then organize that information. So imagine all those articles that we just found, rather than creating tab after tab after tab on our, um, on our browser, we, and then having to come back to it later, we could just be adding it into this standalone tool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing for just a second and share again so that you can see what this looks like on my end. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Zotero library and let me go to share screen again. This time you're gonna end up seeing my whole entire desktop. So <laughs> sorry for the mess but let's get down to the Zotero stuff. Here we go. So this is what my Zotero library looks like. Uh, this is definitely an advanced user kind of Zotero library. Um, Cause if you, when you download it, it has absolutely nothing in it. If you clicked here on my library, there would be nothing here, but you can see I'm a heavy user. I'm such a heavy user that I actually pay $8 a year to get the um, additional storage, but not a single other person on campus aside from maybe one or two professors does that. So you really don't need to pay a thing for this. You can see that I've um, that as I've gathered articles, these are all things that I've found in my searching and I've been able to take the things that are in this list and put them into subtopics. So today I told you I was working on cats. I've already created a folder of things on cats. So these are all the things that I created about um, cats that I'd researched previously. And if you look, you'll see that I can even put notes. So um, here's an article called Cats Are Just Bad Roommates. And so over here it has the abstract, but it also has the option for me to create individual notes. And so previously I looked at this and I said, I like this book because it's about cats. If I want to continue adding to that, I can put more in there. So cats are great. Um, and so that will stay with the item. And the other cool thing with that is down here, not only can I create these notes, but I can actually open it into a separate window so that if I needed to place this right next to an article, so let's say the article is open right over here, I could start taking notes that about that article that was be captured and sit alongside with that article. So it's just a nice way to keep your information organized. Some of the other things you'll see is that it captures the full text. So if um, in the case above, if it didn't have the full text, it does provide a link to the record. So we should be able to get to the full text of this. Hoping this is gonna work. Look at that. So there's the full text. Um, totally doesn't look like the right book. Uh, so something is wrong. Uh, like I said, no tool is flawless, but um, I can always update that. And I can also add um, an attachment. So if I went back up here to cats are just bad roommates, I can attach a stored copy of the file. So if I find that, so it's just a nice place to manage all your stuff. Um, some of the other things that it allows you to do in addition to taking notes, 
organizing it into categories is that you can quickly add a bibliography, create a bibliography. So here I'm gonna just quickly create a bibliography from this collection. It asks me what style I want to use. And so if I wanted to do MLA, I can um, mark that I want it as a bibliography. I'm gonna copy it to my clipboard, click okay. And let's open up a text box real quick. This is probably gonna strip out some of the formatting, but there you go. That is the bibliography that we just created. And to make it even more exciting, um, I'm not set up for this right now, but you, there's actually plugins for Google Docs and for um, Microsoft Word that you can use. So, um, so as you're writing your paper and you need to insert a footnote, you can tap into your own personal database of sources, search for the photographed cat, and it's going to let you um, add that citation information into your paper and then put it at the bottom for the bibliography. So those are some of the quick tips with it. Um, that was my sales pitch on this. And so it's definitely a tool that you want to learn. We don't have enough time today to cover all the details of it, but if you wanted to learn how to add that, I would just go to Zotero.org and you can get started by just clicking on download. The biggest thing for you to remember is that you have to download two things. You have to download the computer program. If you're on a PC, it's gonna recognize you're on a PC. Download that program to your computer so you can see that I have it down here. Then for any browser that you want to work in, um, you go to zotera.org in that browser and then come to this connector. So it honestly, for Mac users, it doesn't work well in Safari. They have a glitch right now, but it's gonna work in Chrome. It's gonna work in Firefox. So um, not Opera, sorry. But uh, once you have this, notice that it has a little icon over here. This is what lets me, if I went into Google Scholar and I search for cats, Notice that that little icon over there changed to a folder. It's saying that it's seen a list of items on this page that are able to be um, added to Zotero. So um, I'm gonna just open up my Zotero library, make sure I've got the cats folder situated, minimize that again. And when I click on this, this lets me just go ahead and apparently these are not cat related though. I know I shouldn't care about this, that we're just gonna go ahead and add another keyword. <laughs> All right, let's do it one more time. All right, welfare of cats and uh, wildlife, we're gonna add that one. We're gonna add uh, feral cats in the city. And when I click okay, you can see that it's adding that into my folder. And here we go. We have those added into the folder and it grabbed the PDF. So this is why this is such a cool tool. Um, and I had somebody ask about YouTube videos. So let's go to YouTube and see about searching for cats. All right, so right now it's not identifying a collection of items, but let me see if I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one. And I'm gonna pause it. Oh, oh man, now we gotta listen to an ad. Definitely should have prepared for this one. So apparently this video is brought to you by Lytle and by Contact Stream. Connect team. This is the problem of not preparing ahead. Okay, so here's our video. I'm gonna pause it up here. See that that icon changed? This is what it is for a video. So we're gonna add this into our Zotero library. And there we have it. Let's check and see what kind of information it pulled up about this. It has, it says it's a video recording. It gives us this as a title. It'll be interesting to make that be a title. Um, the director they're deciding is called the funniest cat ever. So there might be some updating that we need to do about this one before we actually um, finalize that citation. I'd probably, since this is such an unusual one, I would definitely look and make sure that there was nothing else that I needed to worry about. But it does look like the, the owner of this is called, the author is gonna be funniest cat ever. So 
I guess that's what we're going to have to use. And if we right click on this, create a bibliography from this item in MLA, let's see how that looks. So <laughs> I really think we'd probably take these emojis out, but um, you can see that it did do what I would consider the correct format. It's got the title, it's got the um, creator in italics, it's got the um, title of the work, um, it has the date it was produced, it has uh, the source where it came from, so the container where it came from, and then a direct website URL. So, so yeah, there might be things that you do need to fix in some of your citations, but it definitely saves you a lot of work. So um, that is it for our presentation. Um, if you need more help with it, then just email us at library at agnescott.edu. Uh, Christopher Bishop and myself, Casey Long, we know all about Zotero. So please come meet up with us. You can go to Agnes Scott Library. And from our website, if you want to learn more about these two tools, just set up a research appointment right here. You can find time with one of us or just drop by our offices, room 113 and 112 in McCain Library. So thanks so much for your time and have a great day.